So now that we know the basics of the menpause function, I wanted to show you this project that I used as the demo of how to actually use this function. So just jumping in here before we start, if you would like these project files, they are available through my YouTube membership. So if you guys aren't aware, I do have a YouTube membership. They're gonna be available. I've got two tiers. I've got the idea tier, which is the lower tier. And then I have the thought tier, which is the higher tier. Um, both of them are $5 or less a month. So if you want those to help support me a little bit, go ahead and check that out. You do get all of my project files with the second tier and some other cool stuff with both of them. So check those out if you are interested. Um, but I'm also giving this little spaceship as part of the scene file, obviously. So you'll get this spaceship as part of it. So if you're interested in that, make sure you guys check that out. But to jump in here, uh, pretty simple. I'm not gonna go through how I made the spaceship. Uh, if you wanna look, it's just a, a bunch of nodes, basically a bunch of extrusions and stuff inside the terrain, pretty simple here. Not really gonna go through that either, it was just making a simple terrain. And then this is a little Lapras. It's not really Lapras, but uh, it's a little toy, um, rubber toy, so just something simple there. I do have, for rendering purposes, this little attribute wrangle on it for the opacity, just a hot tip there. You can use these attributes on the points to animate values for redshift because you can't actually animate materials inside redshift just a little workaround for that but if we take a look let's get rid of this for now let's just focus on our little beam here so if i take a look to start off here i just have this line which all i've done on this line is made it a little bit longer and made sure it's only two points here and then i am transforming it across to wherever the spaceship is. So as I move across the scene, you're gonna see that it moves along with us. But right now it's staying at the length of what we set, which was 30. So I wanted to make that animated along the geometry because in the final render, you see the bottom of the little beam is actually fully um, see-through. So it's not, it's not opaque. Um, that just makes it a little bit nicer it's just something a small little touch but from here all you have to do is do the min pause function so once again we're doing at p because we want to get the uh, the point uh, position and then we want to set the min pause with our first input here so our first input i look is just our terrain so our that's what we're plugging into our, or sorry, our second input, I should say, um, in, in coding speak, the first input is zero, and the, the first, sorry, yeah, the first input zero, and then the second input is one, and then we want to set the position of our point equal to whatever the minimum position is of our, um, to our, our second input here. So then I just set a P scale, which is just going to drive this polywire, and that's across both points. So then I'll go through in the second attribute wrangle and just set the bottom point to, or sorry, not the bottom point, but the top point to a value of three. So once we drive this polywire, you see that we get this nice scaling. If I set this to four, you see it's just getting a little bit bigger. So three was what I needed to kind of match the shape of the spaceship. And then I've just got some materials here. Let me just quickly go and take a look at our material. So for our beam, nothing special here really, except for uh, this little ramp. So we're doing it across the UVs and this is how I'm getting the opacity in here. And we're also, I believe we had that set. Let me go back in here. Maybe I didn't actually use the, um, the opacity of our, oh, that was on the lappers, sorry. So if I go back to material context here and I take a look at our lappers here, something special there is just the opacity for the particle attribute lookup, which basically gives you the animation of the material. 
So if I go back in here, just kind of thing to note with our min pause, as we go across and kind of move this line across our geometry, you see that it starts to kind of give us this nice little wiggle, which you may or may not want in certain circumstances, but um, if that's the case, you're gonna wanna animate it probably by hand to get a nice smooth thing, because this kind of does snap a little bit across here. You can see kind of snaps a little bit, but that kind of gives a cool little like shaky look with this project. So I was kind of okay with it, but just be aware that if you're moving it across a bumpy landscape like this, it's going to snap to the nearest point to whatever it is set to. So you may not want to use this function, but for this case, it works pretty well. But that's basically the gist of this little demo scene. So if you would like, like I said, the spaceship here, along with uh, the project files, so you'd see kind of what I did and kind of just step through everything if you would like. You can get those through the YouTube membership, like I said, so that's a tier two uh, option. So the thought tier, that is $5 a month. So if you're interested in that, make sure you guys get that. But uh, make sure you join my Discord. I'm about to drop some new stuff here in a little bit. It's gonna be a couple of free things, uh, as well as some stuff for our YouTube members. So make sure you guys keep an eye out for that so you don't miss out on any free stuff that's coming out here soon, hopefully. But anyways, hopefully this helps you out. I've got a bunch of other videos on my channel going over a bunch of other things inside of Houdini, as well as some stuff with Redshift, Octane, uh, I've got a little bit on Cinema 4D and Clarice as well. So if you're interested in any of that, make sure you guys check those out. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.